Welcome to Sunday School for May 1st, 2022, for ages 25 and over. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's topic is Healing the Blind Man. Please turn your Bibles to John chapter 9, verses 1 through 17. Please also have pen and paper ready to write down today's notable scriptures, to answer today's questions, and to write down the daily home Bible readings for the week. Our Bible basis is coming out of John chapter 9, verses 1 through 17. The Bible truth says Jesus ministered to people by meeting their need. The memory verse says, Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. And that's from John chapter 9, verse 16. The lesson aim says, by the end of this lesson, we will know that traditions should not be used to ignore human suffering or needs. Reflect on a situation where we felt discriminated against or ostracized and participate in activities that help people in need. Life need for today's lesson. Remember that Jesus cared for those who are considered the least. The Bible learning says, Jesus put the blind man's need to see before the Jewish rules about Sabbath observance. The Bible application says, to understand that Jesus expects us to participate in meeting the needs of others. Students' responses. Students will discern opportunities to be a blessing to someone in need. Our lesson scripture, John chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seen. The neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, 
This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thy eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Today's biblical definitions are sin and should be made manifest. Sin, to wander from the law of God or violate God's law, should be made manifest. That means made visible or known what has been hidden or unknown. Light on the word. In the first century world, Blindness was a severe hardship. Usually, it meant that blind people had to support themselves by begging. Some scholars report that mud made from spittle was common treatment for eye problems in Jewish medicine of the time. Modern medical science suggests that for that remedy to work, it would take a miracle. The introduction says, Pharisees. The Pharisees were a group of Orthodox Jews who prided themselves on strict faithfulness to their rigid interpretations of the law of Moses. Jesus' emphasis on the proper interpretation and spirit of the law and the hypocrisy of self-righteousness led to many clashes with them. Siloam. The Pool of Siloam was a spring-fed pool located in the southeastern corner of Jerusalem. The Gospel writer points out that the Hebrew word Siloam means scent, probably referring originally to the outflow of water from the spring, but in this context, serving as a symbol connected to Christ's messianic ministry as well. Jesus was the Messiah sent by God, and he sent the blind man to be healed. Lesson point one, whose fault was it? John chapter nine, verses one through seven of our lesson text in review. As long as people have talked about theology, they have debated the problem of evil. Why does a loving God allow people to suffer? Why do bad things happen to good people? These are deeply troubling concerns, but sometimes doctrinal debates about them cause us to miss the point. That seems to be what happened with Jesus' disciples. John begins the story. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? When the disciples saw the man who had been born blind, their minds jumped to an old theological argument. Many people going all the way back to Job's friends, believe that suffering is a punishment for sin or lack of faith. Among the many problems with this belief, it doesn't explain how a person could suffer from blindness since the moment he was born. Some might argue that the man's parents had sinned. The disciples were curious about Jesus' opinion. Jesus is the light of the world. Verse 1 of our lesson text. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Jesus saw a blind man as he was walking along in the city of Jerusalem, or probably outside the temple. Notable scriptures. John chapter 8 verse 59 and Acts chapter 3 verse 2. 
The man had been blind from birth. His case was desperate. Notable scripture, John chapter 5, verses 5 through 6. Jesus is all powerful. Notable scripture, Luke chapter 1, verse 37. He is able to help even in a hopeless situation. Verse 2 of our lesson. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? For the disciples and for the Jews of the time of Jesus, personal suffering of this nature was supposedly due to personal sin. Here, since the suffering began at birth, the problem was in identifying who was responsible. Either this man sinned in the womb or his parents had committed a sin before the man's birth. Notable scripture, Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 and Exodus chapter 20 verse 5. While the Bible allows a general relationship between suffering and sin due to the fall, it refuses to re permit the principle to be individualized in every case. Notable scriptures, Genesis 3, Romans 5, and Job, the book of Job. A person's suffering is not always due to a particular sin he or she committed. Verse 3 of our lesson text. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Jesus told the disciples that this man's blindness was not due to his sin or the sin of his parents. It occurred so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Notable scriptures, Exodus chapter 4, verse 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. This is not to suggest that God made this man blind or allowed it in order to use him to reveal his glory. Notable scripture, James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. As in all seemingly hopeless cases, the man's blindness allows the works of God to be revealed. The man's story is a sign revealing the glory of Jesus sent by God. One of the marks of the coming of the messianic age is the receiving of sight by the blind. Notable scripture, Isaiah chapter 29 verse 18 in Isaiah chapter 35, verse 5. Verse 4 of our lesson text. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus pointed out to the disciples an urgency to be reckoned with. Notable scriptures. John chapter 4, verse 34, Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 to 51. Jesus used a short parable about day and night to talk primarily about his ministry and later the ministry of the disciples. He compared his ministry to light shining in darkness. Notable scriptures, John chapter 1, verse 9, John chapter 3, verse 19, and John chapter 8, verse 12. His life is compared to one day of labor, and it will finish with the night of his death. Notable scriptures, John chapter 5, verse 17, Luke chapter 13, verse 32. Thus, he must take advantage of the hours of the day in order to finish the job before the coming of the night. Notable scripture, 
John chapter 11, verses 9 through 10. He was talking about his imminent death. This is an explicit connection to Jesus' earlier claim. Notable scripture. John chapter 8, verse 12. As the light of the world, Jesus offers salvation to all human beings. After his death, his disciples will be called to be his witnesses. Notable scriptures. John chapter 4, verse 34 through 38. I'm going to repeat that. John chapter 4, verses 34 to 38. John chapter 11, verse 7 and verse 15. And Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Verse 6 of our lesson text. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Jesus proceeded to heal the blind man using a mud pack made from saliva. No reason is given for using a mud pack instead of just saying a word, as in previous healings. Notable scriptures. John chapter 4, verses 50 and verse 53. It may be that the man needed to be involved in the healing process by an act of obedience to Jesus. Jesus probably used the mud pack, not as medicine, to stimulate the man's faith. Notable scripture, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 13. Verse 7, And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Jesus sent the man to the pool called Siloam, meaning or explained, interpreted, or sent. Notable scriptures, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 20, and 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 30. Water flowed from the spring at Gihon into a pool in the city of Jerusalem. Jesus sent the man and he himself was sent by the Father. In John chapter 9, verse 7, having obeyed the command to go and wash in Siloam, the man came back seeing, meaning he came away seeing or able to see. Healing was the reward of his obedience. Notable scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 to 23. It is not that the water of Siloam had a curative virtue. It is his faith leading him to where he had been sent. Notable scriptures. Luke chapter 17, verses 14 and verse 19. Question 1. What answer did Jesus give to the disciples? Question about the cause of the beggar's blindness. Write down your answers. A new creation. Not surprising, the sight of a blind beggar created a stir in the neighborhood. Some of the neighbors tentatively recognized him. Others thought he was a different person who happened to look the same. The man used to sit and beg, but after Jesus healed him, he could walk and run on his own and would be able to earn his own living. By giving the man the ability to see, Jesus transformed his entire life. This miraculous healing is one of many fulfillments of prophecies for telling that the Messiah would give sight to the blind. God declares through Isaiah, I will keep you 
and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. Notable Scriptures Isaiah chapter 42, verses 6 through 7. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 5. And Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 6. Miracles like this one point directly, point directly to Jesus' identity as God's promised servant. Lesson point two. The blind man receives his sight. John chapter 9, verses 8 through 12 of our lesson text in review. Blind eyes being opened is also used throughout scripture as a metaphor for spiritual insight or visions that people could only have received from God. Notable scriptures. Numbers chapter 22, verse 31, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, and Luke chapter 24, verse 31. The healed man is eager to claim his identity as the former blind beggar. I am the man. Notable scripture, John chapter 9, verse 9. When his neighbors pressed him for details of this extraordinary event, he replied with a simple matter-of-fact retelling of his story, centered on Jesus. Later, he summarized his experience in a brilliant statement. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Jesus heals the blind man. Verse 8 of our lesson text. The neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Verse 9. Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Verse 10. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? As a result of the miracle, the man's neighbors started discussing his identity. They were used to seeing him when he was a beggar. Notable scripture, Acts chapter 3, verse 2. But they were seeing a different person. They were not sure he was the same person who used to be a blind beggar. They explored different opinions. The man assured them that he was the same person. He used the same self-identifying expressions used by Jesus. I am he. Notable scriptures. John chapter 6 verse 20. John chapter 8 verse 24 and verses 28 and then verse 58. He was asked to tell them what happened to him. Verse 11 of our lesson text. He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. The how of a miracle is always difficult to explain. But the, main, but the man stuck to the facts. He explained very simply how the miracle happened and who did it. The man who, who healed him was called Jesus. Verse 12 of our lesson text. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They asked the man where Jesus was. In F. F. Bruce's view, the question, Where is he? suggests that those who questioned the man 
would have liked to question Jesus too, to see if the two accounts tallied. Since the man could not see when Jesus made mud and smeared his eyes with it, when he went back home after his healing, he could not really know where Jesus was. Question number two, how did the beggar explain what happened to him to his neighbors? The poison of legalism. Not all the witnesses of this remarkable event were enthusiastic. The neighbors brought the healed man before the Pharisees, religious authorities, who perhaps they expected would be interested to see a real life miracle. Instead, the Pharisees grilled the man with questions, observing that Jesus healed him on the Sabbath. Notable scripture, scriptures, John chapter 9, verses 13 through 14. According to the Pharisees' interpretation of Moses' law, activities such as making clay or washing your eyes were considered work that was unlawful on the day of rest. Some of them reasoned, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. Notable scripture, John chapter 9, verse 16. This is a clear case of legalism. The law, or worse, someone's interpretation of it, is set as a measure for judging a person standing with God. While the law itself is not a bad thing, God never intended it to be the foundation's of our relationship with him. The law points out our sinfulness, but it has no power to keep us from sinning or make us live better. For those things, we need faith in Christ alone. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us into Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Notable scripture, Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. Lesson point number three. Jesus places needs before rules and regulation. I'm going to repeat that. Jesus places needs before rules and regulations. John chapter 9 verses 13 through 17 of our lesson text in review. Some of the Pharisees pointed out the flaw in the legalistic logic. How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? This led to a disagreement and a quarrel. In the end, all the Pharisees missed the point. They were judging people based on their own inflexible understanding of the law, rather than allowing for any compassion toward their neighbors or understanding of the fact that God doesn't always work the way we expect. Though he lacked specifics, the healed man knew what he thought about Jesus. He is a prophet. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees, saying that insistence on one's self-righteousness is the real form of blindness. Jesus' miraculous healing, his acceptance of the blind man, and his refusal to work within the system of legalism showed that the Pharisees' approach missed the point. The point is to allow God to transform us supernaturally into something new. It is similar to what Paul said, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Notable scripture, Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. Jewish leaders challenge miraculous healing. Verse 13 of our lesson text. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. They took the man to the Pharisees aforetime 
meaning at some time or once they brought to lead to a court of justice or to a magistrate in this context, him to the Pharisees, probably because the miracle was so out of the ordinary and religious issues related to the Sabbath were involved. The Pharisees, as religious authorities, will know how to handle the situation. Verse 14, And it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. The day on which the healing occurred was the Sabbath day. At this point, the reader is told that the healing of the man who was born blind had happened on the Sabbath. One of the categories of work specifically forbidden on the Sabbath in the traditional interpretation of the law was kneading, and the making of mud or clay with such simple ingredients as earth and saliva was construed as a form of kneading. For the Pharisees, the healing of this man violated the laws of the Sabbath. The making of clay constituted work and caused the worker to be a Sabbath breaker. Verse 15 Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. The Pharisees asked the man again, or in context anew, to explain how he was healed. They repeated the same question as the neighbors in verse 10. How can you see? It was important for them to find out a basis for an accusation of the breaking of the law. The man explained the healing very simply and briefly using three verbs. Put in context, meaning to lay on or put upon. Wash, meaning in context, to wash oneself, to bathe, and see. Basically, the man told them, he put clay upon my eyes, I washed myself, and now I see. Verse 16 of our lesson text. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. The man's account of what happened was so persuasive that some of the Pharisees were clearly impressed. Notable scripture, John chapter 3, verse 2. They said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? Others, however, accused Jesus of breaking the Sabbath instituted by God and of being a false prophet, trying to lead the people away from God. Notable scriptures, Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 3 through 5. So they were divided. Notable scriptures. John chapter 7, verse 43. And John chapter 10, verse 19. Verse 17. They say unto the blind man, Again, what sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, he is a prophet. They asked for the man's opinion of Jesus. His opinion did not count much among the hostile Pharisees. They probably just wanted to get some words out of the man that would allow them to make an accusation against Jesus and even the man. The man said that Jesus was a prophet, maybe in the succession of Elijah and Elisha, or perhaps he simply used prophet as a synonym for man of God. It may also have been that it was the highest category that man could think of at this point. Notable scriptures, John chapter 4 verse 19 and John chapter 6 verse 14. Question 3. What law was Jesus accused of breaking by healing the beggar? 
please write down your answers. Legalism or true faith. Legalistic religion can make people judgmental, but true faith in Jesus results in a supernaturally transformed life. The Bible application says, In this story, the Pharisees show several characteristics of what modern researchers call spiritual abuse, such as legalism, judgmentalism, authoritarianism, rejection, and placing doctrine above people. If you're not familiar with the topic of spiritual abuse, study a list of its characteristics. Have you seen spiritually abusive or legalistic behaviors in religious groups in your experience? How can you avoid these in your own church or ministry? What facts about Jesus might you point to if you needed to encourage someone who had suffered this kind of abuse in his name? Students' responses. Examine your own approach to people in need. Is it theoretical like the disciples, judgmental like the Pharisees, or compassionate like Jesus? If there are any people or groups of people you've been avoiding unintentionally or on purpose, take the initiative to offer them some tangible help or encouragement in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, I ask you to forgive to forgive us for any time this week. We made judgments about people, even if we didn't say it, but we thought about it. Help us to accept people for who they are and see the best in them. We pray for those who are in need, and when you show us their need, we pray to promptly obey you in meeting their need, even if it is inconvenient. If it is money, we pray not to judge how they use it, but leave that between you and them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Dig a little deeper. The authorship of John's Gospel and the identity of the beloved disciple. John's Gospel claims to be based on the testimony of one who is identified as the disciples whom Jesus loved. He is never named but appears frequently on the pages of this gospel, leaning on Jesus' chest at the Last Supper. Notable Scripture, John 13, verse 23, and acting as an intermediary between Peter and Jesus. Notable Scripture, John 13, verses 24 through 25. He follows Jesus into Pilate's court during his trial and was at the foot of the cross during Jesus' crucifixion. On that resurrection morning, he outruns Peter to the tomb, looks in, and believes. In the epilogue of the gospel, this disciple identifies Jesus to Peter and questions Peter's fate. Who is this disciple? Early church tradition Early church tradition identifies him as John, one of the sons of Zebedee, who with James, Jesus called Sons of Thunder. Arrhenius, a disciple of Polycarp, said John himself, the disciple of the Lord, who also had leaned back on Jesus' chest, he too published the gospel while he was staying at Ephesus in Asia. I can remember the events of that time so that I am able to describe the very place where the blessed Polycarp sat and the accounts he gave of his conversation with John and with others who had seen the Lord. Therefore, we may conclude that John is the author of the gospel that bears his name. Because of the overlap, 
readers should see the di digging deeper discussions on religious groups in first century Israel. The seven signs of John's gospel and metaphors in John's gospel. Notable scriptures are, excuse me, daily home Bible readings. Monday, the topic is hope for the future. Read Isaiah chapter 29, verses 17 through 21. Tuesday, the topic is separating light from darkness. Read Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 19. Wednesday, the topic is light for the journey. Read Exodus 13, verses 17 through 21. That is Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 through 22. Thursday, the topic is the blind questioning blindness. Read John chapter 9, verses 18 through 23. Friday, the topic is teaching the unteachable. Read John chapter 9, verses 24 through 34. Saturday, the topic is seeing but not seeing. Read John chapter 9, verses 35 to 41. Sunday, the topic is the light of the world. Read John chapter 9, verses 1 through 17. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.